It says we're live. Okay, the countdown didn't go again, so I, I don't know what's going on with there. Hey, you know, <laughs> we keep it real here. It's a twisted pair, you know, so no countdown. We're just going to say, hey, here we are live, folks, and I'm Graybeard with the Twisted with Leap and Grain Society, and you are on the Twisted Pair. <laughs> and I am Fine Ash Red. That's your go, Red. And I'm... <laughs> and um, tonight, I want to introduce our guest. We have Mr. Hollywood, and he is the owner of Lux Cigar um, Lounge. So um, we're going to um, talk with him about the lounge that he has and a couple other things. But first, we're going to get started with what we're pairing. But I'm going to let you say hi, because I just went into that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? If it's all right, it's all night. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, as you know, I'm here at the Underground because that's this is this is our home lounge, and this is where you know I love to go live at. So, what's up, UG? Uh, hey, come on, you guys can do better than that. What's up, UG? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right. So. Our guest, what what are you what are you pairing for us tonight? Uh, tonight I'm actually drinking uh, the Woodenville Bourbon. Um, that's one of Hennessy Moet um, Bourbon. It's in their portfolio. Uh, this is bourbon is actually made in Washington State, and um, this is actually the regular. My my preference for Woodenville Bourbon is the Port Cast. Uh, where I'm at right now it doesn't have that, so I'm actually drinking just the regular. Uh, bourbon tonight. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. And, and your smoking is? I'm smoking the uh, Espinosa 601 Oscuro uh, full body Nicaragua long filler in this cigar. One of my favorite cigars actually uh, and one of uh, Espinosa's strongest cigar. Um, so that's what I'm pairing with tonight. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, Red, what about you? I am a smoking a Don Kiki, the platinum one. And it is by K by Karen. It's with hers. Um, and this is like one of the old ones, the good original ones that he actually blended. So um, it is from her late husband, Don Kiki. So it was his blend. And then before she branched out on to hers. So if you have not tried any of the Don Kiki um, cigars, you definitely need to give them a uh, try. They are really good. Um, and tonight I am pairing it with my own cocktail that I created um, because this is a chocolatey uh, cigar, a San Andreas uh, wrapper. Um, I kind of wanted to keep that chocolatey notes and the coffee notes going. So um, I have I created amaretta a drink that has amaretta vodka and butterscotch schnapps a, with a little bit of the heavy cream in it to kind of give it that creaminess um, so it wouldn't be like too over the top with the butterscotch and amaretta so that's what I'm doing tonight so we'll see how it pairs. What about you? I am smoking. I am smoking one of my favorite cigars, by definition, cigars. DC, the good guy. This is the solidarity. And for my pairing, I am going with uh, Castle and Key All Batch. Their uh, batch number two bourbon. In our one. Uh, so there we go. So, so everybody, let us know what what you're pairing. I see that we've got uh, Chris Coulter said Woodenville is one of his favorite. Nice. And he was just at the distillery back in January. Um. So yeah, let us know what what you guys are pairing tonight. All right. So, Mr. Hollywood. Out of South Carolina, born and raised. We got, we we got we got uh, we got the King Chrome in the house. Uh, 
Maker's Mark. Maker's Taco and Maker's Mark. All right. So, so tell us, tell us about what what's what's going on in South Carolina there. And yeah, I know you're up in North Carolina right now. So tell us what what what's going on with there. What brought you up to North Carolina and what's going on with the lounge? Uh, so I'm in North Carolina right now because I own tax offices. So I have two locations that's in North Carolina. So I'm I'm here from December to May. Um, in in South Carolina, Charleston, um, I started. I got in this uh, cigar industry uh, about three years ago. I started with a mobile, um, and the reason I started with a mobile uh, because at the time, you know, I've saved my money and I wanted to open up a cigar lounge. And and uh, what happens? COVID. So um, I'm very innovative. And I told, um, you know, I, I started looking at these trailers and stuff like that. And I had a had a partner at the time. And he was like, hey, what do you think about this? And he, he showed me this trailer. I said, you know, we can put the cigar lounge in that trailer. And uh, we went and I, I inquired about the trailer. I went to Atlanta and I bought it. We brought it back. We started working on it. And um, the reason I didn't open the lounge is because I, didn't, I wasn't sure if we was going to be able to put people in the building or people can come in or not, you know, locking into a lease. That's a whole nother ball game, lock into a lease and can't have nobody come in the building. So designing the uh, mobile cigar lounge is on two lines. It's either on the lines of a party bus or a food truck. All right. And that's two concepts. Uh, food truck is where you can go and set up anywhere that you have permission to set up at and you can sell food, right? As long as you have your business license and you, your taxes are paid, you set up anywhere that you got permission at and sell cigars and fellowship, all right? Uh, on the um, party bus side of it, you know, how you rent a party bus, you know, for however many hours you want to rent it, you pay an hourly rate. So, and it's private. So in the pandemic, we were able to do private events because now you decide who you want to come to your event because it's at your house or a place that you may have rented. Um, and it's not, you know, it's closed to the outside public. So if someone at the time rents, rents the lounge or say for you, you rent the lounge and it's doing COVID and you get one of your friends call you, oh, I'm sick. Well, yeah, you can't come to the house <laughs> because <laughs> it's private. And I'm just glad that you called me. But, you know, those are the concepts. But um, I took it a little further than just being able to rent it out and doing pop-ups. Um, I started seeking corporate to start, you know, to start renting it out. So now Lux Mobile does um several events with the department of defense um we do all the steeplechase horse races from nashville to maryland down to charleston and aiken uh bear festival and i'm these are these are venues that holds 10 15 30 000 people and i like to be the only cigar vendor <laughs> so that's where i started mm -hmm. that's exactly where i started so let me ask you, like, so someone rents the cigar lounge. Now, do, how does the cigars work? Do y'all sell cigars there or do people sell cigars? Them? So I do a, um, so say there's a wedding, okay? And uh, they rent it for two hours and I know it's a wedding. Um, it's a $300, uh, $300 an hour, minimum in town, two hours. Um, out of town, if I'm, if I'm leaving the state, I'm a six hour man, and uh, but you have to pay for lodging and gas because I, sh I shouldn't incur no expenses. This is your event, we, we're designed out here to make money, even though we make money, we still like the fellowship, we're spreading the love of the leaf. So, it so it's this different packages, but I give away. Well, I'll say I'll give a complimentary five to ten cigars, depending on the type of event. But we sell cigars. So I have humidors. Um, 
that's on the lounge. Uh, and, and, you know, I started with maybe 20 different cigars and I smoke a lot. So now I'm up to about 70, 80 different cigars on the yeah. Mobile Cigar Lounge. So, um, if are they able to like choose like what cigars they would like, or is it just those cigars? So, is that no, kind of it's, it is is basic is one on one. Um, basically, being a cigar yeah, tender, we choose so as as they come in. You got some people that knows what they like yeah. to smoke, with, mm -hmm. or if we don't have something that they that they like. We pick out what's com uh, comparable to that. Um, when you come in and you and 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 you don't and you've never smoked a cigar before, that's when we kind of doing like a little small one on one, figuring out what you like, what you like to eat, what have you ate, uh, what what you what you're thinking about tasting. Um, so now that's up to us to choose the right cigar for that person. And ninety nine times, we usually choose the right cigar. Now, um, and I'm sorry, Greybeard. I, I'm just kind of like these questions are coming. So, no, you're good. Uh, so for as far as drinks and stuff, mm -hmm. are y'all able to, or is it BYOB? Because like, like Texas, every state is different with how they handle their liquor. Mm -hmm. So you you know, for something like that, is it like people BYOB, or are you right. able to provide liquor? Well, in, in my in 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 my state. Um, you can get a one-day liquor license or an event license just for an event, or you can pre-sell your drinks. So it's like a so it's like a bar tag. All right. So say, hey, I want to I want to get five hundred dollars worth of drinks. It's already paid. It's already paid prior to the event. So there's no money in exchange for a drink. So there is no crime happening or any laws being broken. Wow. Well, I'm just impressed with the one day. <laughs> because we don't have a one day liquor license. <laughs> oh man. Now you know what? You may you may have it, you just not might be in the right position to get it. Um, there are a lot of loopholes yeah. with like nonprofits. Yeah, uh, there is like, anybody can get a band wine one day. Is there, is there a way you can mute for a minute so I could hear? I'm sorry. It's a lot of background. Sorry, I couldn't. That connection is. This is bad. So, um, anyway, I'm oh, sorry. What were you saying about like the before I cut you off? Oh, talking about the so there are, you know, you just have to find uh, if you can in your state. Some there are there are some capabilities depending on the state uh, on getting a one day event license um, or a liquor license or a beer and wine license. So mm -hmm. there are opportunities or or, or avenues to get it. Uh, now, on private property is is also different. Yeah. So private private property private property, you know, I've done a lot of stuff with um, uh, I say clubhouses or um, where there's where there's memberships, mm -hmm. um, and everything they say hey, everything is private. So once you ask permission, or if they're having a wedding or whatever it is. You know, you, you customize that package, whether it's a whether it's a, um, a bar tab or a cigar tab. You know, some folks don't want any any of their um, their members or clients or uh, guests to pay for anything. Right. Oh, there you go. Ah, oh, there. We went to the phone. Uh, you good, Gray Beard? 
I, I'm working on getting to another location, so I've got a little bit of better connection. Give me just a second, guys. Sorry about this. But, I mean, it's... Okay, and then you also stated that... Okay, so how many la mobile lounges do you have? Do you just have one, or is there more than one? So I have one. I've helped mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four others since I've started. Um, there's one in Chicago, there's one in uh, Greenville, there's one in Greenwood, and there's one in Mississippi. Okay. And then you were saying that you built out the trailer. Now, what kind of trailer is it? Is it like so, a... This is a two-car hauler. Okay. It's a two-car hauler, but this one has air conditioning and heat. Uh, mine has a cigar. I mean, has a um, fireplace in the inside. It has built-in uh, sound system. I have uh, three TVs, and I have like a little small portable uh, for ventilation, which I may have turned that on maybe twice in three years. Uh, one is because I keep my back door down and I keep the side door open. Um, now, and I saw how I gradually kind of grew real fast from the inside because I can seat 15 people in the inside. So I add an awning on the outside mm -hmm. and I add another 15 on the outside. So I can seat up to 30 people comfortably. Well, because like I was wondering how many could fit on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then with, then I saw the picture of the awning on the outside, which yeah. is, and, and I'm going to say this, like I have, a recreational travel trailer that I pull. Okay. And like one thing is it's nice to have that awning on the outside because of the heat, even yeah. though you can put lights on it, but it makes it more, I don't know. It's like, I think people really enjoy the outdoors of it. Well, we, we enjoy the outdoors because of the pandemic more than anything. <laughs> we was, we was cooped yeah. up in the house. We couldn't go out. <laughs> We had to wear masks. I mean, st some folks still wear masks. You go to the store, you go home. You go to the store, you go home. But you know, mm -hmm. you know what raised in the economy and 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 made money: liquor and cigars. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if y'all say liquor like how we say it. We say liquor, L-I-C-C-A, not yeah. liquor. Not li <laughs> liquor. Yeah, right. We say liquor. I, I say it more like like liquor, like yeah. like. Liquor. L I C K E R. Liquor. <laughs> Liquor. <laughs> now you say L I C K E R, not L I C K H E R. Yeah, see that's well, that's see, that's you, you you could you could take that however it is that you want. Uh, liquor. Liquor. <laughs> it, it is is the sound better for, for everybody on this one now? Mm -hmm. It sounds good. I don't think the sound was it was just the background. Okay. Yeah. Well, well see, for, 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 a lot, for, a lot too. yeah, for me, my internet was just the internet on the Wi-Fi there is just not not good on that laptop. So I'm gonna have to recon reconsider things. But uh, let's not talk about that for the show. So now I know that. Um, so you got the idea. You wanted to open store. Then you opened up the lounge. So you've talked about if you travel different places. So where all have you gone? What's the furthest place you traveled? So I'm 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 gonna back up because I didn't do this without a with, without any mentorship. I, I had Christine uh Morgan, she's in Atlanta, she has a actual uh fifth wheel, house oh, wow. on wheels, and she mentored me through my process. And uh, Preston Gray, which I'm at his lounge right now, he has a brick and mortar. And, um, you know, prior to getting up until I got the lounge, he was mentoring me and then I got with her. Mm -hmm. Now, where have I been? Lord, where have I not been? Um, I haven't been out of the country with it, so I can't. <laughs> well, you can have it shipped. You never know. That could I be can't have it shipped. If somebody pay for it, yeah, I, I, I will go. So, and then everybody know I don't hook up unless it's paid. Now, I do do some I do I do do some community service. Okay, 
I do a lot of community service uh, with the mobile. Um, I let folks do uh, raffles uh, with the mobile. Okay, so I'll donate, you know, like two hours and they'll sell a oh, raffle cool. to raise funds and things like that. Um, we we do a, a uh, book bag and bicycle drive every year. Uh, I'm in thousands of book bags and, and, and a couple of hundreds of uh, bicycles uh, for families in the low moderate areas. Mm -hmm. um, so we do, we do a lot of that. But I mean, from Maryland to DC, all up and down the East Coast, in the Chicago. Um, so mostly on this side of town, I've been. Um, I, I don't think nobody want to pay that kind of gas money and, and uh, <laughs> for me to come all the way over to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. Um, but if you pay me, I'll come. I'll I'll even leave a couple of days early. <laughs> But, it, but but the thing is, in this industry and with me having the mobile, you meet so much people mobile. Um, and I've traveled and cultivated a lot of relationships. I mean, I'm just, just working with the DOD um, is mind blowing. You know, mm -hmm. and and they found me on uh, Duns and Bradstreet. So you know those that are, that are looking to you know to start a, a mobile. Uh oh, we we, we lost Graybeard. Graybeard. There you go. <laughs> so oh, yeah, there's two. Talking, everybody. <laughs> But, Sorry about the technical difficulty this evening. Yeah. It happens. It's computers. <laughs> technical difficulties. I, I'm usually not the one that has them, but, you know, sorry. I can't I apologize for that. No, it's normally me. So... Um, oh my goodness. And I apologize. I, and I'm going to say, I feel bad because, uh, I have not even gone to comment. So it is my apologies. Um, so here we go. Oh, okay. Let's I, see. I, wow. Five place. Okay. Brenda shots out to Brenda. Brent, Brenda is actually one of my brand ambassadors for Charleston Smokeout. Yes. We we and love our Brenda. Yes. So I kind of like could have wanted to Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So okay, you're, good. you're so you're also doing a part of a smoke out. So yes. can you kind of explain that event and tell us because you said Brenda's one of um it, my she's my girl. Uh yeah. she you know, tell us about that and what all that's going on so we can get an exposure out there. So yeah, I just clicked on the comments. Uh, not uh, Albert. There is. Is there any? Is there? Is there? Is there? Any venue you won't? That I won't do. Yeah. Um. No and yes. The reason I say no is because um, I do screen events um a lot mm -hmm. so because and so when someone sends in a uh request for for the mobile to come i get on the phone and i call them and i ask them about their event and all aspects of it um there are some events that i've turned there are a lot of events that i've turned down um because of the clientele that i don't want to be around mm -hmm. And um, so venue wise, uh, no, but clientele, the venue wise, yes, but clientele, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, so I like my life and I like my, I like my kids. <laughs> so 
I want to wake up tomorrow. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> if the Lord allows it. I, I will have a drink. I will have a drink to that. There yes. we go. Cheers. Cheers to that. So um, on the process, so usually when someone wants it, they contact you. It j- yes. I mean, they might fill out information and you call them. Uh-huh. What, and you let's say you approve. What would the next step be? Next step would be they would do a deposit of the half of the rental. And um, if if the rental is just local, it would be half of the rental. If it's out of town, they would pay half uh, the half of the rental, lodging, and uh, gas up front. And they would pay the remaining balance two weeks prior to their date. Uh, when we get to the event, when we get to the venue, depends depending on if it's local, we get there an hour before. If it's out of town, we get there either the day of, if it's later on in the evening, depending on the hours. So, so say mm-hmm. like I'm going to Maryland, uh, May 2nd and 3rd. It's a mm-hmm. two-day event. And I get there the day before the event um, because what I do with the DOD is I handle the whole project. Mm -hmm. I I book the venue. um, I book the DJ. I book the caterer. um, I bring all the cigars. They want allocated bourbon. I bring all of that. All of that comes with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hire um, bartenders. Uh, decoration, porta potties. It's like I'm putting on the event. I was gonna say you you take care of the stress. The, the, the everything. <laughs> um, so when I first got this uh, contract uh, with competitive range, they uh, they were asking me these questions and these questions, and you know this is just on an email, and I'm like, okay, okay, cool, and. We're going back and forth. And then he says, no, I, um, he said, no, I want you to put everything together. And that's what I do. You know, so prior to me getting in the cigar industry, I've been a promoter since eighth grade. So I do festivals. I do concerts. I put on parties and things like that. So I just took I just took what I knew from the promotion side of it and put it in the cigar industry, which started to be the Charleston Smokeout. And he's going on. He's I, so I, I don't know anybody in Maryland, you know, at the time. And I reached out to a couple of people that knew people in Maryland and we could start putting it together and all that kind of stuff. This happened in seven days to put on almost a forty, fifty thousand dollar event in seven days. I pulled it off. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, a wow. And now I'm around general this person and 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 senator this person. Yeah. Um, I hired um, deputy sheriff and private security. Mm-hmm. So this is really now what what blew my mind is you know I'm thinking this is all you know somebody playing playing with me. And uh, he said, well, go ahead and send the invoice for the deposit. When that deposit say ching ching. <laughs> I said, oh shit, this is for real. <laughs> and that one thing, you know, you go and you you, you, you put your own price in it, all right? Mm-hmm. So I stayed at a nice hotel. I put in premium gas in my truck. <laughs> 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 so it 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 was it was fun. Mm-hmm. It was fun. But um but I meet so much people important uh, of status and, you know, some pictures I can't even share because, you know, mm-hmm. some people can't be seen with certain people. Yeah. But what what happens when, you, when you're smoking this and you're around people? It brings people together. No matter if you're black, you're white, Hispanic, Cuban, it doesn't matter. This right here, You know what they it's need to a, do? It's a great, it's a great equalizer. That's what I've been really? calling the cigars for years. The great equalizer. I, I don't know why they don't let you smoke cigars in church. <laughs> you know, Charles Spurgeon did. I, I like that. Charles Spurgeon, my, my favorite favorite quote. And tonight, 
I think I'm going to smoke a cigar to the glory of God. All right. Albert asks, what's the largest event you have done? 30,000 people. And I've done that about maybe 10, 15 times in the past three years. Uh, just did an event in Miami, uh, which was a New Year's Eve two-day event. Um, Friday and uh, Saturday and Sunday, whichever was the 31st and the 1st. Uh, Nashville steeplechase horse races, about 30,000 people. Um, the high, uh, high Water Festival is about a good 20, 25,000 people. And um, usually I'm the only cigar vendor there. Um, and we are most highly requested to come back. So people like to have seats when they don't have chairs and we provide seating, you know, so under our honor, we have about 15 seats. It's just the vibe that we create, you know, the customer mm -hmm. service. You, you got to have, it, only thing we don't have on the lounge is a bathroom. Uh, do you promote, do you provide fresh rolled cigars? Now, on site, if a roller is requested, we will have a roller come with us. That is an additional cost. Okay. Uh, would you love to see you at Buford Air Show? Hey, Buford is right around the corner. Buford, South Carolina? That's the home of the Geechees. So, so I got a question for you. Uh-huh. What what is what is your what is your go to cigar everyday cigar and do you carry that cigar in your lounge as a, as a staple cigar? It has to be just one. <laughs> because I got, I, got, okay. I, got, I, got a couple, I got a couple I can name right now. If it's in the morning, it's pedermal. Right, in the morning, it's pedermal champagne or um, Rosa Sharon, Southern Draw. Mm -hmm. Um midday i can do uh i can do a la duena my father's um, oh yes oh another i'd say another medium in the midday i can do a um cao mx3 mm -hmm. oh i uh, love that cigar later on in the day i can do an escuro 601 espinosa or i can do a La Gloria Cubana R series. Mm -hmm. uh, what else later in the day? Um, or any one of definition cigars. So it, it's, I can name some more. <laughs> so I love the station there for years. Oh, the Low Country is a beast. So I love to see you. Uh, used to fish out. So, Chris, my my physical location is in Monk's Corner. Uh, I'm right behind the KFC. Uh, so that's the first location. I'm actually working on the second brick and mortar. You know, once they once they start stop going back and forth with me with the lease, but I am working on it. Um, Brenda Espinosa every day. <laughs> Yes, she loves her Espinosa. So how? So it's on Facebook right now. Where can I share that on Facebook? Where is it at on Facebook? The one that I see on the leaf green. Yes. So, leaf and green. Leaf and green. Grain. 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 Leaf and green. Society. I'm on that page Society. right now. Yeah. I don't see it. So you're you're trying to to share this the show? Yes. Well, maybe I can't share it because it's a private group. No, 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 no. So it's, it's not not the group. Uh, 
facebook.com slash leaf the letter n grain society and then you should see where where we're live on that you can share from there oh i see it mm -hmm. i see it say less So, so when you, what, what? Go ahead. No, no, you go. You go ahead, because my question is that is may or may not have already been asked. Oh, okay. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, for like the the smoke out mm -hmm. that there that you are doing, if you could tell them like when the date is, uh, where it is located, and like who all, because you talked about you had uh, sponsors there and brands there. If you could kind yes. of give a little bit when it is, because some of our viewers might be there or they're traveling and they could fit that into their travel plans. Okay. So let me turn it off. Let me turn it back on. Hold on. <laughs> Third annual Charleston Smoke Out, May 4th, May 4th through the 7th in Charleston, South Carolina. The most innovative four days of fellowship meeting folks, vibe, smoking cigars, dancing, games, and show. So Charleston, South Carolina, charlestonsmokeout.com is where you can get tickets. We are still accepting vendors. Our sponsors so far are Espinosa Cigars, Definition Cigars, Caldwell Cigars, Rockefeller Cigars, Clout Cigars, uh conscious cigars out of tampa uh pepper law firm david ayla law firm uh lipsticks and fingertips that's my auntie christine um holmes glass uh bacardi usa so that's patron that's angels envy that's great goose that's um do say and um luck cigar lounge GTG Charleston. Did I leave anybody out? Who would that? Santa Clara. Oh, Santa Clara. Smoking Rose. Rose, Status Quo. SFX. Who's that? Santa. SFX, yes. Yeah. So, so and it's what what when when is when is the event? The event is May 4th through the 7th. That's May Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday is the meet and greet. Uh, Friday, we call the event called the Hook Day. That's where people take hooky off of work and come in fellowship at 1 p.m. in the daytime. Now, uh, Friday is, we call it the field day and show edition. So you know how we had field day in school? where we're playing mm -hmm. games and all that kind of stuff. You know, potato sack. We got this one game where you got to hold a egg on a spoon, and if that egg fall, you got to take a shot. Um, and then show the, the show part of it is where I have a lot of bands that's going to come in and perform and, you know, kind of serenade you and 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 make you dance. Vendors, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of vendors. Food trucks, vendors, apparel, cigars, um, you name it, it's, it's that's, that's Friday. So uh, Saturday we have a venue, uh, which is at it's actually a lot uh, Latin uh, venue uh, that they allowed us to come in and have our day event there on Saturday, uh, which each event will have a cigar brand feature. So each cigar brand that we have involved is going to be featured. So they're going to get their shine. You'll be able to talk to the owner or the rep that's going to be there and uh, learn about their cigars, even purchase their cigars, smoke their cigars. So Saturday night, uh, we're going at another venue, uh, which is called the Montague Room, the Montague Room, and you'll be able to uh, dress and press. So you put on some nice good clothes and dress up and and uh, eat some food and have a good time. And each vendor, only time the food trucks can be on site is at the hook day. So everybody that's a vendor for everything else can come to each event. 
Um, and then Sunday is our farewell, farewell all white party. So, and that's going to be at Lux. So what we do is we take over the whole parking lot. We put up some tents where you can smoke inside or smoke outside. There'll be music. Vendors will be there again. There'll also be another featured uh, cigar brand. And um, this year is, like I said, it's the third year. So the first year we started in 2020 during the pandemic, ran at about 600 people in attendance. Uh, last year, we, we just about doubled that. And this year, um, we have nine brand ambassadors that's promoting from across the United States, from Vegas to Chicago to Maryland to Macon, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, Greensboro, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Merritt, Florida. And um, did I leave one out. I said Vegas. I think that's everybody. So yeah, it's about nine nine brand ambassadors. Um, I found out about throughout Robert Caldwell's Instagram page, and you know the main thing is like how we said, bringing everybody together. And I know everybody does a cigar fest or a cigar week, and I've visited just about everybody's cigar week except for Chicago. I'm going to Tampa this year um houston uh but bringing folks together is the main thing you know meeting new folks you know so that's where i'm at i already called out cough cough Charles is now, are you coming are you coming to <laughs> dallas texas cigar week what's the dates the following week the following week after oh, oh, oh. The, the very, after yours the very following week hold on yep because i think i can make that because that's a that's a break between queen city cigar fest which is two weeks after that okay yeah i think i can make that so yeah we 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 are sponsors of the dallas cigar uh week Nice. You want me to bring the this trailer? Year. You want me to bring the <laughs> I, I can't afford to pay for it. I'd <laughs> love for you to bring your trailer. I mean, have have, have Lux Cigar Lounge in, in, in the DFW area? Yeah, I'd be all down for that one. Nice, nice. I'm trying to keep up with the comments over here. 1014 Texas Cigar Week. I see you, Albert. Albert, I th thanks for the logo, too. I found out about the Caldwell. Don't miss it. Tag people in the comments. Marcus Jennings. Hey, so Marcus Jennings, that's in the in, in the uh, comment. Um, I've mentored um, TPN. Tobacco TPN. They have a mobile cigar lounge in Greenwood, South Carolina. And um, they 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 are they are they're doing it. I mean the same trailer. Uh, they 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 did what they did with the ceiling, added some lights, and they are the only thing the only thing that that has to do with cigars in Greenwood, South Carolina. Starting with the mobile. So kudos to you guys. That Keep is on doing it. Very cool. Um, now. Do 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 want to shout out his partner, um, Steve Haygood. Shout it out, and you know I'm gonna say God bless the dead because he he just passed, mm -hmm. like in within the last two weeks. Oh, so God. that was his partner starting. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 those those are my guys down in Greenwood, mm -hmm. right? So, so tell us about what, and if I've asked a question that you've already answered, just just say, Greybeard, you're, you're behind the times on this one. <laughs> but get, have you talked about where you where you are right now? The lounge so, that you're at right now? Uh, so right now I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Uh, I'm sitting in the first location of Tailored Smoke. It's in Uptown. And they uh, gave me permission to be in their locker, their, 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 members, their members only locker membership room, if that's the right way to say it. <laughs> So that's where I'm sitting at right now. Uh, Preston Gray is the owner of this location. He's also starting to franchise Tailored Smoke. Uh, has a second location in Concord, North Carolina, which is about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes from this location. Uh, they're starting uh, another location in Hickory, uh, another one in Virginia. And there are some other uh, prospects that's looking to open a Taylor Smoke. So he's franchising. So if you want to look up Taylor Smoke to be a franchise, <coughs> not in Charleston, <laughs> uh, but uh, you can go to taylorsmoke.com to find out that information. Uh, T A I L O R Tailored, E D, I believe. E D. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. To me, to, to especially when I'm reading it right here, it's, it's not you. It's technical difficulties. <laughs> it's not you. I, I I tell you what. I the, the, these technical difficulties, and I'm an IT guy, and I'm having these technical yes. difficulties. <laughs> what what does that say about me? The perfect note cigar. Mobile cigar. Yes, Marcus Jennings, uh, Chris Coulter. Uh, Send me the information uh, for Buford. And if the dates is good, and if, even if I don't, if, even if the mobile don't come, I'll come. <laughs> uh, but I, I enjoy, I enjoy there you go. Uh, being in the cigar industry. Um, it, it, takes, it takes a lot of time, uh, traveling. Mm -hmm. Building relationships, um, and, and you know, one thing with the cigar brands that I do have in my brick and mortar, uh, most of them, I've met the owner. I've sit down, I've drink with them, I've eat ate with them, and uh, we talk about future business mm -hmm. because we help each other grow. We help each other stay in business. And if if you are in the cigar industry and if you are not doing that, shame on you. <laughs> All right. Yep. I got a problem with my mouth. I, I agree. Excuse me. We've we've met a lot of uh, cigar owners and whiskey owners and you know industry owners you know through Leaf and Grain, through our pairings and through the show as well. So I mean, you you got to get out and know the people. And, you know that you're supporting right uh, you know we 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 love red myself albert who's who's part of us you know our whole group we love supporting the brick and mortars the you know the the boutiques the crafts the micros we oh, yeah. want to provide support to everybody along that line yeah that's why we wanted to have you on the show is because mm -hmm. Let our viewers know who Mr. Hollywood is and who Lux Cigar Lounge is. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, this, this, uh, you know, I, and I always tell people sometimes your plan ain't God's plan. Mm -hmm. And my, my plan was not to be uh, the face of Lux. Um, but it happened, mm -hmm. and I am enjoying it. I am embrace, I'm embracing it, and right now it is it, it kind of it happened, but I think I needed it. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and I always kind of fall back to 2020, COVID. And I lost my mom to COVID in 2020. Oh, and I started the mobile Sorry. in uh, Fourth of July was when we started uh, Lux Mobile Cigar Lounge. 
And in 2021, I just started traveling, Mm -hmm. like supporting everybody. You know, there's a cigar fest, I was there. There's a cigar event, I was there. Uh, There's somebody that's in the cigar industry that had a birthday party, I was there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just meeting folks and meeting folks and meeting folks. And now it's just, it's it's overwhelming. It's, it's, It's good. Um, but I appreciate everyone that has gotten me to this point. You know, I don't know everything and I'm still yeah. learning, but I ain't nobody fool. <laughs> All right. I ain't got stupid written on my forehead. <laughs> but when, when, you know, uh, my spirit can, can, see folks as genuine Mm -hmm. and see through folks that got bullshit. (laughs) Can can we say that? Yeah. 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 It's after seven. You're good. (laughs) I, 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 I glad I, you know, I got to check on that because sometimes (laughs) I'll be on the radio station and, and, and on, uh, and on the, and on the, in the news station, I'd be, I have to ask if I can cuss or not. Yeah. Sometimes it just comes out. Well, so what? I, I, I made I, I made that mistake. I was on I was on an Instagram live with uh, the guy who's behind the Texas Cigar Week, uh-huh. and he was doing it. He's also a DJ, and so he was also on the radio. and And I dropped a couple of cuss words on there, and, and he's like, "Come on, Greybeard, you know we're on the radio." <laughs> oh, yeah. Chris, so- he's gonna save me a bottle, a Woodenville, if I come to. Dallas, I like that. The possibility I'll check. Okay, what's the famous people have you met? Now, do you want to name? You want me to name the famous people I've met in the cigar industry, or name the fake, famous people I've met in the world? Period. Tell me that. Well, I, I got a lot of people. Through, I think through the Lux, uh, through the business, through the Lux Cigar Mobile. Through the, th- through the business, I was just with Espinosa. I was just with. Uh, 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 Rocky Patel, uh, uh, Padron family, um, the Alec Bradley family, uh, uh, J.C. Newman. I mean, you, you name it. In the past three years, I've, I've, I've met them, shake hands with them, sit, sit down with them. Um, now, th- those are, I named some that's considered boutique cigars uh-huh. and mainstream or household names, I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to say you got you got you got some damn good boutique cigars that's just as good as household names. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Caldwell. Yes. Uh, just just was with um, Robert at TPE, uh, which I I was introduced to TPE and PCA by Preston, and he said nephew. These are these are uh, conventions that you need to be at if you are mm-hmm. going to be in the cigar industry. So if you are in the cigar industry and you are not going to these conventions again, shame on you. <laughs> All right, because how are you going to how are you going to build relationships sitting behind a computer or on the phone just ordering cigars? We we had one of our guys, so Leaf and Grain was at. PPE for the first time this year. One of our guys was out there, and then we'll be out at PCA as well. Nice. So I was gonna. Uh, I have a. What has been, like one of like. Because uh, like you were mentored and you have mentored others. Yes. So one's wanting to start a cigar mobile lounge. What piece of advice would you give them? First thing I ask you: Do you smoke? <laughs> All right. And from Christine Morgan and, and myself, and we chat all the time. And a lot of people will inbox us all the time. And that's the first thing I asked them. And one lady, she told me, I'll tell you what I'm smoking now. That's that. I don't know if y'all can see that. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the nose. So I know that band um, all too well. One one thing I I asked her is, 
do you smoke cigars? She told me no. So I respond back. I said, well, baby, first <laughs> thing you need to do is you need to start smoking cigars before mm -hmm. you want you want to get inside the business. Um, now, when you smoke that, that first cigar, and you, you, then, you almost feel like your lungs is on the ground. <laughs> then you go understand, oh, I need to learn this. Mm -hmm. Now, past that, um learning what you can do in your state or in your city all right some city laws is different from state laws mm -hmm. so you want to learn that first um every business i go into i go in head first i'm going all the way in i'm, I'm giving you 100 percent my socks my shoes my drawers my hat everything <laughs> I'm, I'm putting everything in there and you want to be around people that's in the industry. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit at home and, and, and then just go out. And you got to be a people person. Mm -hmm. How are you going to sell cigars and you don't like people? <laughs> Customer service. Mm -hmm. That's that, really big. That service is really huge. And, you know, it's kind of like when you do step into a lounge it uh -huh. any lounge and it that is not there or you have a bad experience you're most likely not going to return and you're not gonna, and you're going to tell and sadly and this is the reality is like if something negative happens you're most likely going to tell the negative before the positive if that makes right. sense but Great if sense. if someone went above and beyond and gave the hat, the shirt, the drawers, the pants, right. the shoes, you know, you're going to go and tell everybody like, hey, I had a phenomenal experience here. But and they're and they're going to want to go back and want to support you. So I right. think customer service is very, very big. So the mobile experience is very different from the brick and mortar experience. Mm -hmm. right? um, it's more interaction because if you have it set up like how I have it set up, you, you, you're not just, you don't just walk in and you pick out a cigar and you go and buy it and then you go away. Right. You're going you're gonna to talk to the person that's going to sell you the cigar. That person is going to mm -hmm. either pick that cigar out for you uh, that person going to let you know, okay, you can have a seat or, you know, this, you got the music, you got the outside. Um, you, you even, if, if they're novice, you're teaching them about that cigar that they're smoking. So in how I have my brick and mortar set up, it's still, it's the same way because we have our cigars behind the counter. They're in cabinets mm -hmm. and it's on purpose because you want to have a relationship with folks you're selling cigars to. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be in a place where you just pick up a cigar and then you just go sit down. Right. I don't know what you're thinking. Right. Okay. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. We had motherfuckers coming, coming, coming to the city, sit in the church, and shoot up. You don't know who is sitting in your lounge. Mm -hmm. When you walk inside Lux, when you sit down, I can say right now, every customer that comes in and sit down and they see a new person, they're going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love that's, that. A main, that's a main thing about being a cigar smoker, not being shy to talk to people that's in the building. Mm -hmm. You ain't trying to holler. You ain't trying to take somebody. You're just trying to have a conversation mm -hmm. and check who else is in the lounge. Mm -hmm. That is that is really big. Um, you know, I can, you know, being I've been in the the bar industry and in the club industry um, prior to the cigar industry. So I've 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 owned hip hop clubs and R and B clubs and, and and jazz clubs. You know, when I've owned hip hop clubs. There's no way I'm going to sit with my back facing away from the door. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when you sit in a cigar lounge, you should feel comfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have uh, state representatives and, and uh, lawyers that comes in to Lux, and that's their safe space because they feel mm -hmm. safe. All right, you got to provide that atmosphere to relax. You, you, you got a whole big day. You've been you've been to the uh, the court. You've been to the state house. And what happens? A lot of animosity, mm -hmm. a lot of fussing back and forth. What they want to do when they get out? Relax. Yeah, relax and chill. Drink, mm -hmm. Drink you some bourbon. Yep. Some some folks just you know put an ear pod in the uh, what do you call it uh, earpiece in their ear. Mm -hmm. Listen to some music, drink some wine, and, and be on a laptop. That's what got me into the cigar industry. I sit in the same place five years ago. Um, I started my tax offices here in Charlotte. And I came to Taylor Smoke and I sit down. And this was right before they had, no, no, they had the liquor license then. I sit down and I talk to the general manager or the manager that was on duty here. And I watch a lady sit at one spot. She had some wine. She had a laptop. I saw a couple over here talking, folks over here smoking. And I'm looking around. I was like, this is what I like. Mm -hmm. This is the atmosphere I want to be in. I don't want to be in the atmosphere where people are jumping around and, and all this kind of. I, I love music. Mm -hmm. You know? What I do at Lux Brick and Mortar, sometimes I do live music. Sometimes I do comedy. Sometimes I do karaoke. But you can come and relax. Mm -hmm. Smoking this right here. I've, I've been smoking, yes. I've been smoking cigars for three decades now. And I can remember my first time into a lounge to where I sat down to smoke the cigar in the lounge and how people just gravitated towards us. You know, my, mm -hmm. my, my, my ex-wife and I, you know, we, we were sitting down, smoking, smoking a cigar, hadn't been, into a, hadn't been into a lounge in a number of years. I would just buy cigars and smoke them at home or, you know, you know, buy them and buy them and leave. Right. But we sat down at the lounge and got an old fashioned. And all of a sudden there's like, you know, five or six people around us and just sitting there talking. Right. And that, I mean, what you're saying is, is so true here. So, something about the cigar. I, I can go to a tavern that has an outdoor patio, sit down, open up, light up a cigar. Just last night I'm sitting down at a tavern at the patio, light up a cigar, and all of a sudden I've got three or four people that are joining me at the table. I don't know them. They're not smoking a cigar, but they come up and say, hey, can we sit down and sit down with him? We're just striking up a conversation. Right. That doesn't happen to me if I don't have a cigar. If I'm sitting down with just a, a glass of scotch, but there's something about the cigar that's inviting. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to say, like, you know, because on the weekends, I worked at a lounge, you know, and most of the people that come in, you know, they, they sit there and they want to relax and they want to chill, but it's also kind of like, it becomes a family, you know, it does the relationships and they check up on each other. And then if they're not there, they start to ask, Hey, have you seen so-and-so and Oh, Oh, he was sick this week. And then it's amazing how people call and text or, you know, check in and, or they say, "Hey, we missed you last weekend. Where were you?" And right. you know, so, I mean, it it's a friendship and a bond that's created that's unlike when you're going to, you know, you know, Cheers capitalized on it. You know, they had that every day. You know, I wanna go where everybody knows your name. Exactly. Yes, love but that. I don't think that there's a lot of bars that have that anymore. And the cigar lounges have always maintained that, have always had that, where they right. you know, people come in and they know it's their safe space, you know. And even if it's like at different events and you really don't know, you're traveling and you're going into a lounge, 
you know that, you know, there's never been like a, I haven't ever not felt safe in a lounge whenever I've traveled and gone into a lounge. It's mm -hmm. always a place that I know that, hey, it's going to be okay. And I'm not hesitant to go into a new lounge, if that makes sense. So, yes. yeah. So here I have another question. Like what's something that like you're at the, you're doing an event. What is something that's like, like really unusual that happened that was like completely unexpected uh, when you did an event or something? Uh, with the mobile, unexpected. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. You forgot to get an oil change in the generator. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, and so when I first started, and the trailer that I bought, when I bought the trailer, and I, I'm going to tell you all, I'm going to tell you all this right now. I paid five, I paid five grand for the trailer that I have came with the generator. All right. And this generator was loud as fuck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, but you, you grow and you learn right. as you go. All right. So, and, and what you do is when, when you didn't spend that initial investment, um, you got to make some more money so you can put back into the business. Right. All right. I probably didn't get another generator to about maybe, uh, right at about a year. Mm -hmm. All right. I didn't go get a Honda. I didn't spend eight grand, but I, I found, so if you are getting a, a trailer and you want to do a mobile, you can go to Harbor Freight and get the Predator 9,500 inverter. That's absolutely quiet. Sounds like my bins. I mean, she is quiet. So now you can go in neighborhoods, and when they book you for about two hours, that two hours go by real fast. Mm -hmm. So I charge three hundred dollars an hour for an additional hour. It's two hundred dollars. Okay. I'm thinking. I was like, yeah, they having fun. They having so much fun. And guess what? That hour, that hour about to be up. Just, just hold the card. Mm -hmm. But when that when that goddamn that goddamn uh, oil light came on, and those lights shut off, I was like, "All right, y'all, hey, it, it's time to go." You know, I, I got to think of something. You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 but it's right at the hour I, that happened one time. But when it happens, it teaches you a lesson. Mm -hmm keep your generator service. Mm -hmm. So when I know I'm going on a lot of events right around to, because all, all that, all that oil does is it burns. It has nowhere else to go. It right. burns, it burns, it burns. Yep. So I, I have a, I have a guy that works on my generator. We call him the lawnmower doctor. Mm -hmm. He's, over, he's yep. a long, he's a lawnmower doctor. He's over in, uh, in, uh, Liberty Hill. And, I take it over to him and he tell me, I, I, I take care of it. I change this. And he checks everything else. Hey, your spark plug was bad. I went and got your spark plug and this is and this. You know how you go to a mechanic and you take it, take it for one thing and then they end up being all this other kind of stuff? Yep. It'll be like it, that with the generator. But, yep. But he's the only person I go to and I trust his judgment. Okay, let's, let's fix it. But that 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 has happened uh, one time. And I was around some high-end folks, some pharmaceutical guys, and some guys that own their own liquor, and they did this bourbon and other thing. And the generators kept on cutting off, kept on cutting off. I was like, why do I keep on cutting off? But it teaches you a lesson. Um, in the brick and mortar, uh, you say anything that devastating that has happened that uh I would say I won't I won't say embarrassing, but because where my brick and mortar is, I'm in a shopping complex. Mm -hmm. So I don't own the complex, but when it rains, you got a little leakage that's coming down. Oh, yep. 
Mm-hmm. Now I gotta pull a bucket out. And mm-hmm. I, I'm really a per, perfectionist of having everything right. And I'm looking at this bucket and I'm texting the landlord and I'm taking a picture and he knows I'm pissed. And <laughs> and, and and I'm I'm I t- I'll tell you, just in uh and I don't know how they got so many so many leaks, but February 11th of this year, it happened. And one of my cigar tenders that was working the lounge, she said, hey, uh, there's a leak. She said, I put a bucket on. So I text the leak to the landlord. He said, it, uh, he said put a bucket under the leak. He's, and then he says, sorry about this. Just for you to text me that, sorry about this. That's all I want to hear, and that you that mm-hmm. you were coming to fix it. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, that 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 means a lot to me because you are taking it, acknowledging that, it. Yes, and acknowledging it. Um, February fourteenth, he said, "Hey, the roof guy is on the way. Is someone at the store?" And now I know something is being fixed. That that's all you you. One thing mm-hmm. is when things that happens like that and, you, and, mm-hmm. and it's out of your power, mm-hmm. you just got to accept it. Yeah. And and roll right. with the punches. Um, I have not had an event where uh, I've had to give money back because I forgot about it. You, you, you want to have your calendar? Mm-hmm. Set. You, you can't forget about events, um, and I'm very, 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 very busy uh, with the mobile and a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. So I know if I can do it, anybody mm-hmm. else can do it. Um, once you start, once you start that business, and you go out. So, so what I did was I just talk, I took the mobile out every day. I put it out in the public every mm-hmm. day. I went out, I went in T-Mobile parking lot, I went in abandoned Burger King parking lot, I went in an open parking lot that they allow us to be there. I went to the corner store that was up by my house. Um, I did a lot of pro bono events just for me to be there. I want you to mm-hmm. see it, I want you to see it. Right. Um, and I do want to shout out Moet and Hennessy. Moet and Hennessy actually wrapped my trailer, paid for it. Oh, wow. So I am definitely pleased for that. Um, and on, I've been kind of been a, like a little liaison with Hennessy for about the past 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, 17 years in the promotion business. So when I ask, there's no questions. Um, there you go. Build and, so, build and maintain relationships are important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, yeah. and what, what I love about what you just talked about to, to kind of go down that path is, you know, where, where you, you're taking your lounge out, you're building your brand, you're letting your brand be known. Mm-hmm. Yes. And one of, the th- one of the things that we have seen in the cigar business is that there's especially with the boutique brands there's a lot of boutique brands that think that they can just create their cigar and it's just going to go it's just going to go magically like that someone's going to come by and sprinkle some pixie dust (laughs) on their brand and on their Mm -hmm. cigars and everybody's going to love it and grow and they Mm -hmm. forget about the business side of it right the business side of it where you've got to build your brand you've got to market you've got to You've got to promote yourself. You've got to sell yourself. Right. Because now those of us who are inside of the industry, you know, to where we're reviewers and we're influencers and such, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to try different people's cigars, you know, because we want to try, you know, as far as leaf and grain, we want to try it on pairing, you know, you Hollywood with, with your lounge and your brick and mortar, you're going to want to try the different, facings to see if this is something that you want to bring into your store. Right. But if we don't know who you are, if right. we don't know who you are, then I guarantee you that 
your average everyday smoker is not going to know who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. So to, to add to that, you know, building your brand and bringing in um, new cigars into your brand, into your into your brick and mortar or your mobile. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very keen taste buds. I eat a lot of food. <laughs> all right. I drink a lot of drinks. Um, out of the hundreds of cigars that I have in the brick and mortar, maybe one brand didn't move as well as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what you do? Put it on sale. Get it out of there. If someone else requested, bring in a box. Yep. All right. Now, yeah. um, as you smoke, and if you are really paying attention to your taste buds, once you bring in a cigar, people won't know that you have it unless you promote it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I do is when I bring in a new cigar brand, whether it's the mobile or whether it's the brick and mortar, I don't put it, I don't keep it in the humidor. I put it right on the counter. There you go. Oh, he is he frozen? No, or? He's having, no, no he's he frozen. He's it, it, it's not me this time. Yeah. Well, I was scared it might be me. <laughs> no, but, I'm but I mean, he, 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 but he is making I, he is making a valid point, you know, because and that if that is what you know, he's saying bring it up front, and and we notice whenever you know Underground gets a new cigar that they say, hey, this is you know, um, this just came in or this is about to come in. Look forward to it. Look, these just landed. He does his sampler packs. And if, like for me, the new cigars that we get, I either, like I say, um, it's humidor, like today's humidor pick. So, and then I say, oh, we have new arrivals. And when my regulars come in, like my guys that are there all the time, I'm like, hey, they always know that when I come in that there's new inventory because I always bring in the new inventory. Right. And so... I'm like, hey, guys, this is what we just got in. This is what I'm working on, putting on the shelf. This is what this, and I explain about the different cigars that just came in. And if I know their palate and I know what they like, I'm going to say, hey, you're really going to like this. There's one guy who is um, a huge Rojas fan. And I told him, I said, hey, breakfast tacos are on their way. He's coming out. They're coming out, you know, this time, this time. And then I said, expect them in a couple weeks. So, I mean, if you know your customers and that's part of that customer service, you're going to look out and say, hey, this is a cigar that you're really going to enjoy and it's on its way so you can prepare them. So that's kind of one way to do that on that. All right. Back. Yeah. Yay. Welcome back, brother. There we go. See. I, I I I think I got a little mad and I hit the laptop and she didn't like it so that's, uh -oh. that's what happened. I, I was we were both like, uh, is he frozen to you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh god, did did I die again here? Right. <laughs> no, no, we we were we were just we were just building off of what what you're talking about. I mean, as as a B and M owner. You know, and us as as influencers, we we see that you've got to do that. You know, because you can't bring in a new facing and just put it in on your shelf and expect people to automatically gravitate towards it and see, oh, hey, this is new. I'm going to go out and try that. Because one right. thing that I've learned about cigar smokers, or I'm I'm going to say we we class people who smoke cigars as opposed to cigar smokers. People who smoke cigars, they're going to go to their same one every single time. They're going to go and, and get their 
their uh, Perdomo, you know, Perdomo uh, Champagne tenth anniversary, or they're going to go and get their their Rojas House Blend, or what whatever it, it may be, and that's all they're going to smoke because that's what they know. The cigar smoker may look around to see is there something new here that I have that I have not tried. Mm -hmm. But if you just take a, you know, you get two facings for a, a brand new brand and you just put it out on the shelf and that is surrounded by well-known brands, right? it's going to get lost in the crowd and nobody's going to see it. Right. And that's one of the things that the cigar, the cigar owners, especially within the boutiques, they haven't learned. But a lot of them, not not all of them, but a lot of them haven't learned the art of self-promotion. How do I sell myself? How do I sell my sticks? How do I get my brand out there and known? Because branding is, getting your brand known is one of the most important parts, especially of this side of the business. So I'm going to tell you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and my, and my thing is like, you know, is for someone who works at a lounge or owns a lounge and you know, you say that you put yours on the counter. Well, we at, at the place that I'm doing my uh, apprenticeship, we have a uh, new arrivals and it's right there. When you walk into the humidor, it's in your mm -hmm. face. You can't move it. You right. miss it. It's cause it's just right there. And you've got to talk to the tobacconist or, you know, uh, I like, what did you call yours? Your cigar? Well, how did you call your cigar? It's, it's called cigar tender. Yes, I like that. Your cigar there tender. You, you need to like make sure that they're promoting it. And and when you get it, and this is where social media comes in handy. And this is where it's great. Is you can post it to your groups. You can post it on your social media. You can, you know, make reels about it. That's something that I just started doing, you know, creating reels and things. And just putting pictures and things like that and saying, hey, this is what we got this week. Try it out. Come check it out. And then also making sure that um, the people that you know, your customers, you know their palate, you know that they might like a new something. Or if you know that they like a certain brand, say, hey, in a couple months or next month, be on the lookout. They're producing something new. So right. I mean, that's kind of... Um, a form of advertisement and this is just like really really sweet hi daddy we are watching time for bed i, I, I love it. this that is just like so so sweet I, I love, I, so, yeah i yeah, saw that come up was like okay th th <laughs> this is going to call out to your kids love that because yeah, that speaks it. to the character of who you are hollywood mm -hmm. yes sir so i have i have four kids uh, 11, 9, 4, and 1. Three girls, oh. one. Ah. So, uh. I've got and, two. I have two. My, mine, mine are 32, almost 33. And then my daughter just turned 24. And my son-in-law, her husband, is just turned Twenty, and he he said to me, he "Goes, Dad, when I turn twenty-one, I want to go to a cigar lounge with you, and smoke a cigar with you, and have a drink with you." Right. And I was just like, "Thank you, Lord." Yes. So there we go. I have five, plus okay. two in-laws, so I, a total of seven. So um, my oldest son is. Well, all my kids are grown except for my youngest. So I'll just say it that way. And I'm expecting my first grandbaby in April. So I'll have my first grandson that's coming. So um, it's always a, uh, my house is always crowded. But like one thing that I've enjoyed that I can say is my children, majority of them are old enough to smoke cigars. So that is one thing that, um, is especially my son lives like down in Houston area. And um, well, now he actually moved to a different town. Um, and whenever he comes up and he told his wife when he got married, he said, when we go visit my mom, 
He goes, after dinner, we go out to the lounge, we smoke a cigar, and we have a drink. He goes, you are more than welcome, but do not ask me to come to bed with you. Because that <laughs> is a time that I spend with my mom, and it's quality time. Right. He goes, you're more than welcome to join us, okay. but do not ask. And then uh, my son just recently moved out, but when he, my other son, but when he was here, he he enjoys smoking pipes. So we would smoke pipes together and have a drink. And then my daughter and I have enjoyed cigars. So, I mean, it's something that is a beautiful moment that, you know, you get to have real talk. And, and I want to say kind of, you were talking about how, no, whenever no, no, wait, 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 wait a minute, Red, Red. You, you, you said, you said it wrong. It's not a moment. It's a moment. It's a moment. That's what I it's call a my moment. moment. That's right. Moment, M -O -M -M -it. <laughs> and it, it when and it's funny because my, my baby girl, who's about to be 15, she realizes when mom has a cigar in her hand, she's cool, calm and collect and relaxed. So I can talk to her about if I messed up or real conversations that I want to have that might have stressed out, you know, that might make me upset or anything else. So it's interesting that they have gauged that and they know when they can come and approach me um, about approach that they might have to ask. Oh, we lost him again. No, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. here. Yay. I, I just switched back to the lap. Okay. So, um, so that's one thing that I can say as having like the uh, older children, that's like one thing that, you know, is a beautiful experience that you get to enjoy with your children. And it may not necessarily like, you know, I have one daughter who uh, due to her heart condition, she's, she's not allowed to smoke you know, or do any of that. So she will, um, you know, have like a glass of wine or something with me so we can enjoy that. But um, it, it's just kind of like a nice relaxing thing. And it's kind of like what we were saying. It's in the cigar lounge. And when you do these events, it brings people together. It puts them in a relaxed atmosphere mm -hmm. and it gives them an opportunity to approach subjects that they may not or even talk to people that they may not usually talk to. And that's kind of like how Greybeard and I have said, like in this world outside of cigars, we would not have met most likely. We wouldn't because he does his little, he's in his IT world. I'm uh, in education. And so our paths wouldn't have crossed if it hadn't been for cigars. And I think that's a lot of people that go to these lounges, that go to these events, that, um, you know, take part in this, is they wouldn't know each other if it hadn't have been for this. Right. So going back to the new brands and it's like, it feels like Christmas to me, all right? when i know i got new cigars coming yes because i'm so excited yeah. to let everybody taste this new cigar mm -hmm. and then when i get the results of what i'm tasting that they're like oh man this is good this is good so i some cigars i can smell that i know that's going to taste good mm -hmm. All right. Um, that's mostly in infused cigars. Okay. There's this one company. It's called Lucky Cigars or uh, Lucky mm -hmm. Something Cigars. Yeah. I just ordered their peppermint chocolate cigars. Yeah, I saw. I saw that they posted that. I oh my god. That, that cigar smells so good, I, I, I felt like I want to bite it. <laughs> okay? But, I mean, is is that potent that I know the cigar smells, uh, I know the cigar tastes like chocolate, 
and mm -hmm. and uh and mint. Now we know we got the job the Java mint, mm -hmm. and there's uh Bellicosa that has a, a a minty chocolate cigar, and I've smelled all of them, but none smell like this one cigar. That's so, almost like thin mint, smoking a thin mint. Yeah, it's like a thin mint. So the, uh, I guess the lady or the rep, whoever it was, she called me today because I, I ordered at TPE. She said, hey, um, we have an order. It's going to go out today. This is this, and this. And I told her, I said, listen, when you email me my invoice, I need you to email me stock photos of the cigars and this, is this, and this mm -hmm. because those are the tools that we need to promote that it's going to be in the store or in right. the mobile. Now, I, I saw that Albert asked, what kind of advertising do you do? Yeah, that, that was my next question. You were, you beat me to it. <laughs> so I got two I got two two things on that. All right. Two things. One is social media. OK, now we and I, if, if you guys are in the industry, we understand we, we cannot advertise tobacco sponsored mm -hmm. ads. We cannot do anything paid to advertise. Mm -hmm. So but all we can do is post, post, post uh, hashtag mm -hmm. on Instagram and and hope that you see it. OK, now. That's that's the advertising part on physically um i take what i do in guerrilla marketing guerrilla marketing is where you put it in their face you keep on pounding keep on pounding it. that's where if you have the budget to do it do mailers send out mailers yep. in a in, in a um say a five mile radius from your lounge or wherever you're at to get people to come to your brick and mortar um I try to trick Instagram and and Facebook. So I did Charleston Smoke Out. All right. I started the Charleston Smoke Out page on Instagram and on and on Facebook. And and I'm back and forth with my, my graphic guy and I'm telling him do not put cigars on the flyer. All right. Whoops. You have to word play yes. with Instagram and Facebook. Okay, it can't so do. if you are, if the name of your if the name of your business have the word cigar in it, you can kiss that motherfucker goodbye. All right, because who is doing the advertisement that page? And if you have cigar or tobacco or smoke in it, it's not it's not going to happen. So I, I'm hoping that they uplift that. But if they uplift that. That is, that's gonna be king, um, right. and because I've I've I understand I, I've been on the phone with a um, another bar owner that's doing a big event in May, and he's asking me, or oh, I'm giving my opinion, and I'm telling him I said, man, listen, when I've done festivals and concerts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I've I've used radio, so I couldn't use radio anymore, mm -hmm. but. If you can and you find a way to promote on social media, you have everybody that's in their phone. Mm -hmm. When that sponsor ad comes up, whether it's in a messenger or on their timeline, that's where you get them at. Mm -hmm. But you have to go back old school. And, and this is this is this this is what I learned from James Brown. Mm -hmm. You have to put out flyers, you have to pay the, the disc jockey um posters whole nine yards put up posters you have to do that mm -hmm. so if that's asking for advertisement for the mobile the mobile what i the my mobile it, it advertises itself because right. sometimes if i'm in town i will just drive around and don't have an event and i got my trailer on the back of it only only money i'm spending is gas right all right so well, and I'm gonna ask, what kind of truck you, know, you drive? Yep. What kind first we gotta get back to this truck because I want to know so, as as a Texan, I want to know what kind of truck you drive. 
So originally I started out with an F-250 Lariat, and now I have an F-350 uh, Lariat. So she's a... Uh, he's a Ford guy. He's a Ford guy. Yeah, well, uh, we still love you. We still love you. <laughs> but the, fir the first one was sponsored. The second one was bought. Well, and, and I will tell you this. It was funny because I grew up as like my dad drove Fords. We like we always had Ford, 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 Ford. And then, you know, that's what I wanted was a Ford, Ford, Ford. But I'm a GMC. Uh, yeah, because it's got a wider uh, wheelbase. So you're not able if you have a high tra travel trailer with uh -huh. wind currency. But see, yours isn't high. So that's why. But if you have a high travel trailer, it can flip. Now, now this this is the thing. <laughs> what have I pulled the trailer with? I pull it with all. I pull it with an F one fifty before. Uh -huh. I pulled it with a GMC. Uh, and that was the best one that ever drove that trailer. Nah, she was strong. <laughs> she was strong, but. <laughs> When I drive that F-250, yeah. and, and, and folks will tell you that really know me or have seen me pass by them, it's like I'm pulling nothing behind me. Yeah, it, I, I will say, because I had a Ford before, and it and it, it felt like I wasn't pulling anything. Right. That was a crazy thing. It felt like it, I wasn't pulling anything. But I just had to give you, I just had to give you a heck, you know. Well, well th this is the thing. Even though I, it don't feel like I'm pulling anything behind me, Sometimes I forget I don't have anything kind of strapped down inside the trailer. <laughs> so when I get in there, I got everything all kind of all place. over the place. And, 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 and that would be another thing to advise people who are doing like the mobile lounge is make sure everything is strapped down yeah. to haul it. Because yes. even the slightest turn, even if it's a smooth turn, stuff can fall over. He's, that's right. That's right. So I did one event. There was a jazz. It was a jazz event up in uh, Can Bay, and folks were inside the trailer. And there was a, there's a pizza spot that's right around the corner. And the owner called me. He was like, "Hey, when you leave there, can you come by my spot?" And I was like, "You know, okay, let's go." Because mm -hmm. what I try to do is I try to hit all spots that has a crowd to get. The More word out, the word out that Spread this mobile is here. Spreading the gospel. Yeah, so I, I, Spreading want, the gospel. I want. I want to touch. I want to touch on that because that's a different style of marketing. So you got your guerrilla marketing where you're pushing it. You're pushing and pushing it like those mass right. mails. The other type of marketing that we have to do because we can't do ad, we can't do paid advertising. I mean, right? No, no matter how much that Facebook says, hey, you want to boost this post. I, I can't boost any posts. I can't pay Facebook. I can't pay Instagram. I can't pay YouTube. I mean, there are certain things we can't say because we're broadcasting here on YouTube. We can't say where to go and buy a cigar because as soon as we say where to go and buy a cigar, YouTube is shutting us down. Mm -hmm. The other type of marketing that is so important is what you're talking about right now is called organic. Yes. Where you're going out, you're getting that brand known and that brand recognition comes in and somebody goes, you know, man, I would really love to just go and smoke a cigar. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, I saw Lux Cigar Mobile Lounge sitting over here last week. Let's go check and see what, if they're if they're over there again. Right. That's organic. That's that natural mm -hmm. growth. And that's one of the most powerful growths for us. There's a yeah. reason why we're called Leaf and Grain Society and there's no cigar in our name there's no whiskey in our name there's no wine in our name right. but leaf you know what that is and that's grain right. well guess what everything comes from a grain that's right so so you guys can do sponsored ads we can to some degree but if there's cigars in so can, i've, you, I've tried word, to add google wordplay. ads yeah, yeah so we, we've done the, we've done the wordplay but where I'm putting a say, if I if I try to do um, Amazon's ads or Google ad on our on our website, Leaf and Grain Society, it can't be on a 
it can't be on a page where there's any type of cigar content on there. Because I've had Google come back and say, we can't approve this because there are cigars on your page. Right. Even in our commerce, even in our e-commerce, I had to get into a, a with, with Stripe because Stripe is, is who, who, who does the processing of the credit cards for us. Right. And I had to, I had to appeal them and let them know we don't sell cigars. Right. We sell, we sell swag. We sell Glen Cairns. We sell Journals. swag with our logo on it and stuff. Yeah. But you cannot buy a cigar from our page. So and I, I had to I appeal use, it. I used Stripe when I first started when I was selling apparel with Lux Cigar Lounge. I had cups and shirts and this is and this. Yep. And you know what the motherfuckers did? Stop my account. They they stopped they stopped my account and I went back in and did an appeal because I didn't want to have to go through this entire bullshit of doing this again. So right. I went back and appealed and I said, crawl through my site. Let me know where I'm selling a cigar. Right. I'm not. And so I ended up getting it a, a reapproved. But you know, and, and I wanted to stay with them because their actual take on the percentage of the sale was better than some of the others that, right. that I had been working with. So I was able to get past that. But th that's a challenge for all of us that's in the cigar industry. And you've got mm -hmm. to know your industry and you've got to know how to wordplay. Right. Mm -hmm. you got to know how to trick the system. That's right. Don't come back and get me, YouTube and Facebook. I I'm not tricking you guys. But, you know, you, you got to know how to work <laughs> around those and say manipulate the system right yes you, you got you got to know how to work or work around it manipulate it trick it to in order to be able to get your word out because if you don't we, we, we've only been doing this for 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 what 18 19 months now red but, oh. but yeah red and i can walk into a lounge just about anywhere inside the inside the united states and people will recognize who we are because of what you're talking about, social media, guerrilla marketing, and organic marketing. So I, 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 I just had a thought. So it's gray beard and red ash. Ash coming, red. Ash red <laughs> coming to the Charleston Smokeout. What do I, I, I am what, going to do everything. Do I to I, do? I'm going to. I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to try. I, I will okay. try. But we, we're going to be at Dallas Cigar Week the following week. It just depends upon what what and, I can do because. And I'm going to be honest because here in this thing we my family we know that family's first. Right. So my grandbaby will just be like a, one or two week at that age. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to leave my little grandson. All right, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a low incentive out there. Okay. I'm gonna put a low incentive out there. Okay. If you guys come, I'll take care of your lodging. Okay. I'm just gonna put that out there. Okay. All right. So in 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 my in in my city, and I call it my city. Um, uh, I have my way. Okay. I enjoy, I love my city. Um, no matter how much I travel, I get homesick. Mm -hmm. So is it, I'm, I'm ready to come back. So when I have a lot of relationships, I have a lot of connections. And if if so, you guys stay will be on me. So just okay. let you know that. Man. I, I, I will, I will do everything I can. From the crime, <laughs> right? I, I, I will do everything I everything I can do. For for me, it would it would most likely be the Friday, Saturday, and then and then fly back Sunday. Just because yeah. I'm a I'm a contractor consultant in my day in my day job, which means I don't get PTO. You don't get PTO. No, sir, I don't get PTO. So you say you're contracting. Yeah, I'm a con I, I'm a con I'm an IT contractor now. Now they pay me a hell of a lot of money to do that, but I I don't get PTO on this. So that means you work for yourself. Pretty much. 
Okay, I understand that. I understand that. So I, I, I got, I got to plan it around. But I, I do three day weekend travels, so it's okay. not out of the realm of possibility. And knowing that it's that weekend, it's, it's a high possibility that I can fly out and and make a, you know, come out there and, and help support you out there. I'd love to do that. That'd be now, really cool. I see Mavis. Mavis uh, Penn says, Queen City. Are you in Charlotte, Mavis? Uh, just putting that question out there. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just honored to have you guys, for you guys to have me on uh -huh. your show. I know you cool. guys. So are you both in Texas? Yes, sir. Okay. But it, um, and I'll tell you something. So, like my I, family originally comes from North and South Car South Carolina. So my family didn't get to Texas till 1907. Oh. So but, Mavis is a part of Florence GTG, uh, which is a chapter. So GTG is a uh, cigar club. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe okay. is one of. I won't say one. I think is the largest cigar club in the world right now. Um, right at about a couple of thousand members and growing. But he says Very Florence nice. GTD, which is about a hundred, about an hour and fifteen minutes from Lux, and uh, which is one of the chapters that I birthed um, in the whole chapter. So I run the. Uh, Charleston chapter for GTG, and we are over a hundred something members just in Charleston. Um, but it is it is very very large. Uh, I actually got in GTG in June of uh, 2020, and uh, Cigar Mike. Yes. Cigar Mike is in Atlanta, and I was at Cigar Mike. Yes. Yeah, Cigar Mike. He, I was at the lounge in Atlanta called the Patio. Yep. And uh, I, I ran into him. I actually met him at the same place where I'm at right now, doing <laughs> CIAA. And uh, we talked about it. And I had a different name that I wanted to call it, the uh, Brick and Mortar. And uh, he was like, yeah, you want to start Secret Stash? I was like, yes, sir. He said, well, uh, he said, well, I have the executive uh, mayor of GTG here and maybe six other members. He said, you want to come in tonight? I said, okay, <laughs> yeah. Now, and, and not to be a part of GT or to join GTG, you have to buy shots or a cigar for members that are present. Okay? So it was seven members. All right. mm -hmm. Seven members. And not knowing that I was supposed to choose the shot so cigar Mike choose a shot. I spent about almost two hundred bucks on seven <laughs> shots. And uh, after, I, after I found out that I was supposed to shoot, choose the shot, I said, "Cigar Mike, I think you got me." I said, "What was that shot you choose? It was some type of special Uncle Nearest uh, brand that they had at the patio." And I'm gonna argue with Uncle Nearest because that's some good stuff. It is some. Oh good man! Stuff. Oh man! Okay. Better than good, it's phenomenal. It is phenomenal. I like yeah. it. And, and when you when you add how good the juice is, along with the story behind all Corneris, takes it to another level. Yeah, that's right. It does. It, it does. does. And it, uh, it is like it is amazing, you know. And and we always tell people whenever you get behind a lounge and you know you get behind a drink, you get behind a cigar. There's always a story, and There's you want to find out that story because it just makes it so much more special. But I think like the Uncle Nearest story is one of the most beautiful stories that's out there. Yes. And it just like makes it so much more special. I think when you're partaking in the drink. Yes, I, th I think it's. I think out of all the stories that I've heard. It's one of my top two. Yeah. My my top two my top two favorite stories. So 
the, the the other one, I mean, these two go right hand in hand, and the other one is the story of behind the hostage with with prestige cigars, who unfortunately are are no longer in business. Providencia. Yeah. Pro Providencia, yeah. There, there's a there's another there's another uh, cigar group that uh, Red, myself, um, uh, our other partner, Spice Man, Cigar Traveler, who you might have met out at, he was the one who was out at TPE, and a couple of others that are part of Leap and Grain, that's also part of, it's called Holy Smokes. Okay. And they're a Christian-based cigar group. Kind of like and we just and draw. Yeah. We, we, yep, we just hit 6,000 members across the world. Wow. And I'm one of the leaders. I'm one of the leaders of the DFW uh, chapter of it. And the DFW chapter, I think we're at, at about 140, 150 members in the DFW chapter. So I, I, I love that, that, you know, GTG is there. Uh, Red and I are also part of um, Ash Hole Cigar Clubs, you know, oh, and just you. that there's so many great clubs that are out there to really get to know other people in the industry, you right. know, both from the the smoking side of it and the business side of it that we're all on. Well, right. and, and another thing is like, I want to kind of say is even if it doesn't have to be like a big one, like, you know, we have one leaf and grain. We have our leaf little, and grain. Yeah. Yes. Know, uh, another one that we have is like the leaf mob. So it doesn't necessarily have to be where it's huge. The whole no. point, the whole point of these, and there's also whiskey groups, burb, you know, whiskey, bourbons, all this other one. But the whole point of these, you know, these groups is for the socialization. And and I kind of was watching, you know, another podcast. And it, and this part came across, and we've kind of been hitting on it, is all night long. Is, you know, the beauty of if someone is feeling lonely. They're feeling depression, anxiety. They don't want to, um, they have difficulty meeting new people. If you walk into a cigar lounge, and you already said this, you walk into a cigar lounge, you sit down, you smoke. I would say with, with not, it didn't even take five minutes. It's not even five minutes. It's probably mm -hmm. within the first minute, two minutes. Someone's going to go up to you that is, in that lounge almost daily mm -hmm. and say, Hey, I'm That's Ash right. Red. Who are you? That's right. What are you smoking? That's How right. are you today? Yep. What That's do right. you do? I mean, they're going to strike up a conversation and, you know, and especially if you're moving to a new city and you don't, you're not familiar with it. My thing is if you go to these lounges, you go to these places, you're going to make valuable friendships. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. the thing is, like, a lot of places that you go to, you know, for example, what I do with work, I like my coworkers. I only have valuable friendships with maybe one or two of them, maybe one, in all honesty. And I work with hundreds of people. Yep. But the thing is, is with my cigar groups, my cigar lounges, it, it is completely, it's different. And you right. get, you get people who truly and honestly care about you and you form beautiful friendships that go even further. Oh yeah. So th the, that the, is the story that, the story that hit homes for me and Red, you've heard this story before that, that just tells me that this, I'm where God, where God wants me to be. And oh, yeah. I, a buddy of mine and I, cigar traveler, who's, who's one who he works with us with Leaf and Grain. He and I were at Cigar International up in the colony, and we were just sitting down smoking cigars and talking. And he had to get up and go. And there was this guy that was right next to us, and he heard part of our conversation. And he got up, came around, sat down with me, asked if he could you know, join me. And I said, like, "Yeah, man, just sit down." We started talking started talking about some things that was going on in his life and for about an hour or so and then, then he got up and left now I want to say two or three months later I saw him 
at an ACDC cover band concert. Still up there in the colony. So I'm there, you know, jamming out, rocking out to ACDC. Got my drink in my hand, you know, show, showing the, the, the rocking sign, jamming out. Intermission comes up and he comes up to me and goes, man, dude, do you remember me? I said, hell yeah, I remember you. We had a good conversation. He goes, I want to let you know something. That night that we talked, I was going to end it. Hmm. I was going to end it right then and there. And had you not talked to me, I probably wouldn't be here today. But I'm here today because of that conversation. And I want to thank you. And I was just like. That's this it. is where this is where you want me because that's we right. have another life that's still here because we have something like cigars to talk over and just to reach out and be with people. Right. That's what it is. So all right. So that's you. Well, one, yeah. one of our always final questions. That's you. That's you, buddy. One one of our final questions we always ask is, "What's next? What what what, what are we going to see? What are we going to see end of twenty twenty three and end of twenty twenty four from you?" So, right now, I am being very aggressive. Um. I have two brothers that's in Charleston. I want to see grow um, that are just opening their cigar lounge. That is uh, Smoking Rose, Speakeasy, and uh, Status Quo Cigars. Um, that's one. Two is Lux to be that new pillar of Charleston's cigar industry. Um, I'm all about involving any aspect of cigars and whatever I got, whatever I have going on in Charleston. You know, I've reached out to uh, other cigar uh, lounges to be a part, smoke out. Um, I'm not a selfish person, you know, um, I understand what is for you is for you. And, you know, I want to say, you know, everywhere else, you know, it, it, there might be competition and things like that, but I, I don't focus on competition. I focus on fellowship. Now, there is something I do have going on. I, I can't I, I can't speak about it uh, because there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, it is political. Um, but um, outside of the cigar industry, and I know we, we probably want to focus on the cigar industry, my, my focus is my community. All right. Uh, we have a lot of uh, failing schools, uh, kids that need um, father figures that don't have it. Uh, so I'm, I'm the, the cigar industry for me is what keeps me sane. OK. That, that that's what keeps me sane um but outside of it I'm, I'm i'm more focused on my community uh giving back giving help uh, and not just kids because there are parents that needs help too and, and i'm, I'm gonna say as someone who's in education because that's what my day in job is, right. you know, um, there, 
you know, helping like one of the schools that I am at is, you know, Title One. Well, both of my schools are Title One. So the, the areas that they're in does not have a lot of money. And, you know, and in fact, one of the schools had to go to uniforms mm -hmm. because the kids couldn't afford clothes. Mm -hmm. And the school uniforms are cheaper than everyday clothes. Right. And a lot of that community around the churches, the police officers, the Boys and Girls Club, you have local barbers, you have lawyers, you have mm -hmm. different men that have stepped up and help provide it like backpacks. We have the we have the Catholic church that comes in and provides every like first Thursday or something that provides mm -hmm. food for our families because our families can't afford groceries. They provide backpacks. They provide school supplies, the bikes like you, you were talking about. And it's so crucial and I love because you you spoke it throughout this entire program how the community is your number one and how you give back. Mm -hmm. And that speaks about your character. And as someone is in education, it is crucial that we invest in the future. And that right. might mean helping the parents mm -hmm. of these children, because this is what's going to take care of us in the long yeah. run. Yes. And we want to better these children, mm -hmm. like for me, and I think all of us who are parents, we want our children to be better than what we are. Right. We want them to have a better life. We want them That's to right. do better. And we want them to make a better future. Mm -hmm. Then we get into our grandbabies. And that even becomes, I know it's kind of crazy to sound, because you love your kids more than anything. Mm -hmm. But then you get these grandbabies. And that's something different. It is. You know, so um, I love the fact that you're doing that. And I love the fact that you're bringing that to the forefront because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, and, and I'm not just saying for the teachers, but for these kids, and, and I'm going to tell you about a little bit about one of the schools that I'm at. It was the first back with segregation in my city. It was the first African-American school. First black mm -hmm. school. We have a museum in our school. And my kids go in there and they're like, Miss Red, all these kids look like me. Look, that teacher looks like me. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, so that part's beautiful is they can see that they have that history there. But then they see how these teachers have come back. These kids that went to the school became famous football players, famous basketball players, and they have come back and they have invested in this school. And these kids are given hopes, they're given dreams. And in the end, if you think about what pushes you, it's those hopes, dreams, and someone that had a belief in you. Right. And we have so many people that come in, um, that come to our school that tutor, and we have men that come and invest in our children mm -hmm. and that work with them and tutor with them. And the thing is, is a lot of our kids don't have fathers. Right. Come from single mamas, right? Right. And they see men that are elevated in the community mm -hmm. and they actually care and it makes a difference. And, and it's just something as simple as these, these men come in and they read with these kids once a week mm -hmm. or they sit down and have lunch. So um, if you're able to do that, I'm going to encourage you to look up with your whole local school because I'm going to tell you, no school is going to turn someone away to offer to help with those children. Right. So I went on my soapbox. So thank you. No, I, and I'm about to get online. You, you spoke to my heart right there. I mean, and when you said that we have so many kids who are growing up without fathers, and I, I'm going to speak about something that I haven't spoke about yet. And, Red, you probably know where I'm going with this. 
Um, this past Sunday, Sunday, this past Sunday, um, my great niece, 14 years old, who I've never met, who, she lives out in Nevada with, with her mother, my niece, and, and my her grandmother, my sister. She lost her life on Sunday hmm. due to bullying. She went to confront her bully. She went to stand up to her bully and was jumped and was killed with dad. The father was nowhere around. Mother did the best job that she could possibly do. The father mm -hmm. was nowhere around. And when we're talking about reaching out to our parents, I hold, me myself personally, I hold the parents responsible of yes. the, the kids that were bullies. I hold the parents responsible for that. Now, the two that jumped her was a 14-year-old girl and a 15-year-old boy. Now, they're going to have to live the rest of their lives with the, with the fact that they took another child's life. Right. And I'm sorry, that fucked up. That they're going to have to live with that. And that's on those parents' lives. That's on those parents that they should be held responsible mm -hmm. for that. Right. And this is coming from somebody who survived bullying back in the 70s and the 80s. I mean, it's completely different. But the fact that you're going out and giving back to the community and you want to reach out to these kids and you want to reach out to these parents and you want to reach out to these men and say, men, step up and be the man that you're supposed to be. My, yes, 100%, you're speaking to my heart. I want to be the kind of man. My goal in my life is to be the kind of man that I want my daughter to marry. And she did. The be the kind of man that I want my son to be. And he is. I don't want them to be better than me. I want to step up and be the person that I want them to be. And if they get, then that's on me. That's on me. That's not right. on them. That's on me. Right. So there, I'm off my soapbox and before before I break down in tears. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, go ahead. No, I, I, I said I, I, I feel what he's feeling. Mm -hmm. I feel what he's feeling. Um, with being a father, uh, I understand that one man is not all a little boy needs mm -hmm. in his life. No, no. Oh. All right. The village. And and I I, I came oh. to understand that because I've had several other men in my life, mm -hmm. bits and pieces. My bi right. biological father. What I learned from him was how to go out and make money and take care of the family. Mm -hmm. But I didn't learn business from him. Right. All right. I had another man where I learned life, mm -hmm. troubles, mm -hmm. how to learn from those troubles. You know, I had a lawyer that was in my life, how to do the things the right way. So it, it is one person. And, and I talked to a, a classmate of mine just yesterday. Uh, and um, he's in mentorship. He has his mentorship mm -hmm. program with uh, young boys and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's needed. So, yep. yep. Um, at 27 is where I had my first kid, and before I had my first kid, I I didn't want kids. 
And not not at all. I just yeah. want to live yeah, my no, life. that's how I was. But but now that I have kids and I and I watch them, you know, mm -hmm. from from being an, an entrepreneur from and I've been an entrepreneur from 2008 up until now. Was it easy? No. No. Um, and I, and I talked to I talked to a former uh, military person. You you don't say ex. I learned that you don't say ex military. Mm -hmm. You say former. Yes, former. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's taking care of one of his son um, kids, and. Mm -hmm. and Doing, doing the right thing, and and I tell him, and you know, he's he's way up in age. This is his grandson. He's way up in age, mm -hmm. and I tell him, just keep on going, keep on going. I'm 39 mm -hmm. years old, and I'm telling somebody that's 60 something years old to keep on going. So we have to keep on going, whatever age we are, yep. for these for these kids, whatever help. Matter of fact. Take the pride out. Yes. Right? Because yes, please, 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 please take that help, pride out. <laughs> go ask for help because mm -hmm. help is out there. Yeah. Help is out there. You have to do everything you can to help these kids. Do not mm -hmm. give up. So outside of the cigar industry, the cigar, the cigar industry is gonna do what it's gonna do. Mm -hmm. We love, it. we smoke. We drink, we fellowship, mm -hmm. we meet new people, we build relationships. Yes, that's good. But not saying, don't say but. However, yes, we are doing what we're doing, but let's reach back. Get back. Somebody else, whether it's a little kid or an mm -hmm. adult, it don't matter. Yeah. It don't matter. Be and, and it kind of like on this one, it, and I kind of want to bring up two things because sometimes even as adults, we get to a part in our life and we we're stuck or we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So we have to seek out that advice. And, you know, uh, uh, Lenita, uh, she put first her first comment. I'm going to read both of them, even though Graybeard posted them. We as, we as parents were the first teachers of our children. Yes. As parents should be held accountable to a certain extent because everything starts at home. We need several positive male figures, but ones uh, who take the time to mold. And, and that's the key part. You have, you have to take the time to mold. You just can't get in it and then leave it. Some of that's these right. young men need to be taken by the hand and literally lead and to be shown how to lead. So, um, so that is just, you know, I think, I think it's kind of, it, it's important, you know, and that's what is such a beautiful thing about like a lot of schools that they're doing, they're doing the watch, watchdog program where dads come up, they walk around and they mentor these kids mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, you know, and this is when we get to the businessmen, you know, if you have time and if you can you got to commit to it. You just can't do a drive by. Right. And that's what I'm saying is you can't do a drive by. And and it's kind of like, you know, in education, we have teachers and that care for these kids. Mm -hmm. They go out buy their jackets for these kids like at one of my schools, one of the teachers went out on lunch break because she knows her kid didn't have a jacket. And when she asked him about it, she the kid said my mama can't afford it. Mm -hmm. She went out on her own. And and here's the thing is newsflash. Educators don't make that much. I mean, they make more than what some people do. But the fact not that to she cut, took. Not to cut you off. Yes. Even, even though they do that. Teachers. Got to have a backbone. Yes. Because. If they don't, those students in the car calling them by their first name. Oh yeah, no. You have yeah. to have a backbone because yeah. All right, I don't know if y'all understand, but 
it takes a village to raise. Exactly. Kids. And from the teachers mm -hmm. to the kid to, to the parents that's in the neighborhood mm -hmm. to the parents the churches to the mm -hmm. church the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. That that takes a whole to raise kids. And yeah. if and and kids are very very smart. Mm -hmm. Very smart. They 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 have a discernment at a little age to discern if you strong or if you just a marshmallow. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh and yeah. Thank if you. If you a marshmallow, I feel they're gonna take advantage I of it. Feel sorry for that for that teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If there are any teachers that are that are that are listening or that are watching. Take control of your class because those kids are sponges. You just gotta mm -hmm. mold them. Right. You, you gotta mold them. Parents, if you yes. are watching, yes. you gotta mold your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it takes six, seven times before that per before that kid actually grasps what you are saying. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Stay consistent. Yeah. And and that is like that is huge and i think it's kind of like part of what i do is like and what i've done is i used to go into homes mm -hmm. and teach parents how to rear their kids that's, that's part needed. of that it's needed and and it's you know it you have to be consistent that was like the number one thing i said you have to have these rules you have to set up the boundaries you can't falter it didn't matter if the kids falling out on the floor screaming and saying, give me this, give me this. They're going to do that because they know that you're going to cave. And as soon as you cave and give them that, they're going to do that behavior over and over again. But you've got to stand strong and you can't give in to that. And, it, and it's hard. But my thing is, is the whole thing is, is community is important to stay committed. Mm -hmm. And here's the beauty of it, what you were saying. Kids teach us more. We yes. can learn so much. You can learn so much more from a kid mm -hmm. than you can from anybody else. That's right. So uh, I'm going to say take uh, Mr. King Hollywood's example and step up to the plate and right. step in and be committed to it. And that's another thing is if you can't be committed to it, don't do it because kids don't need anyone else walking out on them. That's right. right. If you can't be committed to it, don't even start. Okay. Don't even start. If you can't be committed to it, leadership right. teaching is not about us. It's about them. Right. It's not about us. It, it, it's about them. It's about them. It's about the kids. It's mm -hmm. about our community. It's about everything that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we've, what we've gone on, I mean, we've an incredible discussion. We're at two hours and 20 minutes. Hollywood. Love you, brother. Already. Love you too, brother. Lo Thank love you, you brother. Can, can, can tell you, this has been one hell of a conversation. And, and Red, <laughs> Whatever we have, I mean, our conversations will go just about everywhere. And mm -hmm. you have dropped some absolute, you have dropped some gems, you know, from the business, mm -hmm. from marketing, from advertising, from legal, from community, from, from being, a, being a man, being, being a, a father, parent, being a leader, being a father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A mentor. You have mentor. You have dropped some gems. Thank you so much for your time and joining us. Thank you. I'm going to do everything that I could possibly do to, to meet you out there in Charleston that week. Come out and see him, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank and you. and if, if, the, if you ever got an event, whatever you got going on and, and you need some, some, uh, some cross promotion, you let us know. We got Thank your you. back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We so. we we have got a show 
Oh, next Another week. Another great show next week. Oh, I'm excited. Agonorsa, Terrence Ooh. Riley, the man himself. Mm. Well, I'm trying to do the, my strong the, arm. The, 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 the validator, validate it. The man himself, Terrence Riley. Joel Osteen. Be, Joel Osteen. Joel Holstein is going to be right here on the Twisted Pair next week. And then, Red, we get to see him three days later at the NFG Festival. I know. I know. Three days later at the NFG Festival right here where I'm sitting at as underground. So that's next week. So we, we have got, I, I tell you what, Cigar Traveler, Zach, Cigar Traveler, who went out. Has to been TV, working his butt off. He set up uh, some connections in 2023. I want to I want to let everybody know we've got Rocky Patel, we've got Rojas, we've got uh, Crown Heads. These are just some of the people that are going to come on the show. But that's not all. We've also got some other great pairings where Red and I are going to mm -hmm. dig into different pairings of cigars with. Whiskeys, wines, foods, foods, you name it. That's all right. coming up. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I'm just going to say this. Out next week. For Aganorsa, they have just released this month the Supreme Leaf, which is an orange band. It's the first time it's been in a box. It's not been in a box press. So you need to try it out. No. They also had three other releases out. So those all have hit the shelf at the end of January, first part of February. So make sure that you check out the new sticks or the re-release sticks that are limited edition from Aganorsa. So I'm just going to drop that. That's a new cigar that y'all can try. Uh, I, if you I look on my you IG, have, you'll see it. Yep. And if you have not tried Aganorsa cigars, I, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I just got to say that. I, I'm sorry. You, you're missing out. You're missing out. out. Missing out. So, That's all I'm going to say. Again, my brother, Hollywood, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And until, thank you. And until ne next week, as we always say, explore the pairings. There's something for everyone. Good night, y'all. Good night.